Greetings, podcast listeners. Jordan River here, back at you with more Growcast, straight from the islands. I'm out here in Hawaii for just a short visit, but I will be back very, very soon. I've got an episode for you today. Rizo Rich is back. I know you guys have been dying to hear about his work. He's been very, very busy and gearing up for what could be an amazing key lime madness pollination. We talk about that. We talk about his future work. We talk about a whole bunch of stuff in this episode. I know you're going to love it. Before we jump into it with Rich, though, shout out to AC Infinity. That's right, acinfinity.com, code GROWCAST15, gets you savings on all sorts of products, including the brand new AC Infinity Terraform. That's right, this is a AC heater humidifier combo, and it's an amazing unit that'll help you adjust your grow however you need. Use code GROWCAST15 at AC Infinity today to grab whatever you need. They've got grow kits that can get you started growing, add another tent to your setup, lickety split. I love those grow kits. It's a really great deal to just get a whole new space. It comes with everything you need, the lights, the pots, the fans, the filters, everything you need is all in there. And you can even use code GROWCAST15. AC Infinity has been making the best inline fans in the game for a long time, but now they offer all sorts of wonderful products to growers from protective garden wear, to sunglasses, to plant pots, to trimming scissors. Like I said, tents, lights, filters, fans, it's all there. They even have the refillable filter that is reusable. I love that. That's at acinfinity.com plus their new Terraform, which will help you get your environment on point. Find it all at acinfinity.com. And when you go, use GrowCast15. Helps them, helps us, helps you save. I appreciate you guys. Thank you to AC Infinity. Shout out one more time, GrowCast15 at acinfinity.com. All right, let's get into it. Thank you so much for listening and enjoy the show. Hello, podcast listeners. You are now listening to GrowCast. I'm your host, Jordan River, and I want to thank you for tuning in again today. Before we get started, as always, we urge you to share this show. Turn a grower on to GrowCast. The best way you can help us out by spreading the show or turn a smoker into a grower helps us on our mission of overgrow. Make sure you're subscribed. We're at growcastpodcast.com. We're on Spotify, YouTube, all the places, and then check out the website, growcastpodcast.com for the membership and the seeds and the events and classes. It's all there. Special thank you to the members for making this show possible. All right, everybody, we are back. We're back with another breeder feature with the one and only Rizo Rich. He's an organic gardener. He's a breeder. He's the breeder at Growcast Seedco, for God's sake. <laughs> What's up, Rich? How are you doing, man? I'm doing good, Jordan. How are you doing? Doing excellent, man. Doing excellent. The fans are excited to have you back on the show. Now, Rich has been active in the community, in membership, in our Patreon, doing the AMAs and keeping people updated on the pollinations and stuff like that. But it's been a minute since you've been on the show, man. Yes. Do you want to just update people on what you've been working on? Talk about, uh, we'll get into it more later in the episode, but talk about the current pollination and uh, just update the people. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm, I'm always doing my thing in the garden. So I've just been kind of doing some pheno hunting mainly lately and trying to find some new stuff to work with. Like you said, I, I think we'll talk some more about it later on in the episode, but I've got some new plants, like a, a really nice key lime madness and stuff we're going to be working probably doing a reversal on and, and making some new fem lines with that. And then there's just, there's a bunch of new keepers that I've found, you know, besides just uh, breeding and, and doing the pheno hunting, we've been doing the, the grand pheno hunt and membership with everybody. They're growing Ooh. three, three strains out that are blind strains. I think you said that uh, we did end up revealing re our revealing. Yes. Yes. One of the strains. Yeah, so we we did reveal the uh, the one strain already, which is the rhinos flapjacks. And I do want to say that just because rhinos flapjacks starts with an R, and that was letter R, the other <laughs> letters are not necessarily what the other strains are. So I don't. That's what everyone to, started guessing. I, I know. I, I think everybody was going to equate that. So I just want people to know that just so it's clear that. That just happened to be how it, it played out with those letters for the randomness. But but yeah, man, Dude. it's been really, really fun. Lately, I did have some personal stuff going on. Like, you know, my wife had the baby and stuff. So I've been a little bit absent over there. Mm. Not in there as much as I'd like to be. But uh, no, I'll understandable. Be back in there and we got quite a bit of time still for people in veg and, and, you know, still have to flip and do all that. So it was a good time to 
to step away if I had to during the yeah. hunt, you know. Let me just kind of recap for maybe people who are just tuning in, like if this is your first episode of Growcast, the Grand Fino Hunt. This is the new thing that we're going to do on repeat, guys. We love this idea of getting our community involved in a Fino Hunt collectively. And the cool thing about the Grand Fino Hunt is we're going to use the the ultimate winner that Riser Rich selects, like the winning Fino. We're going to use that in his work and we're going to pay out the winner a thousand dollars cash. So it's like really fun. It's a super low cost of entry. We're still like thinking of different ideas to tweak it in the future. But basically, long story short, we got three different strains, four seeds of each. They're all Rizo Rich's previous work. They've been blinded. And now 200 people are hunting through these. And we're going to get to see which is which. Now, like Rich said, R, they're all labeled a different letter, right? R, Z, and O. That's all you know when you're growing them. R was Rhino's flapjacks. And man, the plants look so good, Rich. It's so interesting to, to look through 800 of these, you know, and of course, like there were some that were males and some people d- right. didn't have room, so they didn't pop every one. So it's not exactly like 800 of each. Is that the math? Yeah, 200 times. Yeah, yeah, you're on point. But basically, we get to look through 800 of these things on a community level. Everybody's posting their updates. They look amazing so far. And I don't want to like put any presumption or, or anything out there, but you got to imagine, Rich, we're going to find a couple incredible phenos, right? Oh. Out of this many. Yeah, man, I would think so, um, especially, you know, just because we use really, really good genetics. And that's a seed junkie pancakes is basically what those are. We took a seed junkie pack and open pollinated it to make rhinos flapjacks. So I, I suspect we'll see all sorts of really cool stuff, especially in those. And like you said, with the, the number it is, we might see a couple, you know, a good handful of, of really special plants. You got to think so, man. So shout out to all the pheno hunters. Uh, we're going to do this again. Like as soon as this one's over, we're going to start a new one. It'll be different rules. It'll be different strains. It'll be different every time. And uh, this is the type of thing we're doing in membership, guys. So come on in. You know where to find us. If you're not already a member, this is a great, great way to make growing fun and uh, win a bunch of prizes as well. So, you know, growing should be fun. And that's what we're doing with the Grand Fino Hunt. It's like a six month contest. So very excited about it. And stay tuned, guys. We're going to reveal the other two strains. We're going to be posting some pictures once we enter flower. We're going to have a lot of amazing pictures and descriptions to go over, and we'll be sharing those with everybody. I do want to thank our friends. Can you believe this, Rich? When Hygrozyme heard about this, you guys love Hygrozyme. They've been on the show. Leanne and Doug are like already fan favorites. Go back and listen to the Hygrozyme episodes. Rich, they reached out to me and they're like, can we sponsor this? Like they put up the prize money. They sent you a bunch of products. They sent us all a bunch of products. Isn't that amazing of Hygrozyme? A huge shout out to Hygrozyme. If you're listening to this and you want to send them a thank you, I would very much appreciate it. How cool is that, Rich? I know. It was badass. They sent me a really nice kit recently with all their, pretty much all of their products. And I'm excited to run them all because I've, I ran the Chitin product, I think High Shield. I ran that one before here and there, but I haven't ran all of their products. So I'm, I'm excited as hell to try them out, man. That's so cool. Yeah, I just want to highlight them. And Rich has talked about this before uh, in membership and on the show. Like, you got to support the right people in the cannabis community, man. Like, there are there are hucksters out there. There are influencers who just yeah, who just take money. But a company like Hygrozyme, not only have they been around for a long time, but they this is like proof of them supporting the community. So very cool of them. I wanted to give just a personal thank you. Take time to say thank you to Leanne and Doug and the whole Hygrozyme team. Definitely. Yeah, it, it's awesome of them, man. It really is. But listen, this is a breeder feature, Rich. We've done a breeder feature or two or three in the past over the years, but like we got to keep up to date on your work, man. You are honestly, you, you've expanded beyond our sphere of influence. Like people are growing Rizo Rich genetics outside of the community. People are growing Rizo Rich genetics outside of the country, both in and out of uh, outside of membership. You've done really, really well for yourself, man. I want to talk about some of your best hits. I want to talk about some of the vaulted packs that are up online right now. I want to talk about the future stuff. Let me ask this, though, like bringing it all the way back around to the idea of a breeder feature. I know that you look for the best. I know that you look for what you like. You look for things that are strong. You're a breeder who doesn't take any presumptions. Each run, you don't even know what you're going to work with until you're at the end of the run. You're looking for the best. I know that about you. But has anything changed about the way that you view breeding or view your pheno hunt selecting? Have, have your flavors changed, like flavor palette changed since the first time we did breeder features years ago? What's changed, if anything? 
Yeah, that's such a good question, man. I think every, you, you have to constantly be evolving, I think, but you do have to have certain criteria that you stick with too, of course, when it comes with breeding. I will say flavor, my flavor palette, definitely. You know, in the past, in the past, I like a lot of everything and I still do. I'll, I'll smoke pretty much any flavor. There's a few that I'm not really, really into, but overall, I like a lot of stuff. But these days, it's mainly, I've kind of figured out over the years that it's mainly like the raunchier, stinkier, more herbal type of plants are more medicinal for me. The effects are the the best. I keep wanting to go back for more and more of it. So that's more of what I personally am after, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think if you kind of look at the last few pollinations, last couple of pollinations, (laughs) You can kind of see that um, simply because like truffle cake is worked into a lot of them. There's a lot of plants that are more on the stinkier, not fruity, not sweet, like anything fruity and sweet. I'm really not a fan of personally. Now, that doesn't mean that with my breeding, I still don't mess with it. In pheno hunting, I'm still looking for fruity plants that are awesome plants. I may not personally be a fan of the turp profile. But other people may love it. So if it's a plant like that that's good and worthy, then I'll still, you know, do breeding with it and stuff. But for my personal preference, I'm more after the, like the cookie truffle shuffle, the Oreo cheesecake, like a lot of the raunchier. Gassier, raunchier. And then you, like you said, some herbaceous stuff too, like the sage. Absolutely. I know you, that sage note is something that people associate with like gas and, and things like that. But I think you actually nailed it saying it's it's kind of herbal. Yeah, sage, pine, like just all those kind of herbaceous or, or I guess plant-like smells, you know? And it's it's funny you're saying that like you've moved away from sweet stuff being that you are the quintessential. Like how does it feel that we're in such a niche? And I'm not saying like, oh, you're the greatest breeder who's ever lived. But like we're in such a niche that when you think about peach strains – like the best peach strains in the world. There's only a couple breeders that come to mind, dude. Like, um, and, and I know there's more, forgive me for not being more well-versed, but like Bloom Seed Co., Rhizo Rich's Peach Quake. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're, you kind of, I don't know. I think you did a lot for the like stone fruit department with your peach quake, your peach pie and peach quake pollination. I do appreciate I th- that. I think you made a big impact on the cannabis world, man. But clearly you are a man, like you said, that, that flavors evolve because I've even heard you saying like, you're kind of moving away from that peach work. Is that fair to say? Oh, yeah. I mean, definitely. Like I said, it's not to say I'm not going to still mess with fruity things and sweet things, but they're going to be more of mothers and pollen donors are probably going to be more of the raunchier stuff. So that way, if I do work a fruity mother and you know, people that like fruit and sweet stuff are still going to be able to find some fruit and sweet, but I want to be able to find some nasty stuff too, you know? No, I know exactly what you're saying. And a lot of what you've handed me has been that more complex, not just raunchy, but like multi-layered flavors. I think that's what a lot of people are after, dude. Yeah. The complex ones. And I, I do appreciate what you say about the peach. Like it's hard for me just as the breeder to like look at it on, on that kind of scale, but I have had a lot of people come up and and ask about the peach stuff or they hear about our peach stuff and they want to, you know, talk about it and grab some seeds. Um, Isn't that wild, man? And it's funny you brought up Bloom because I was going to, you know, credit them and say it's really because of them and their peach pie because that thing was so peachy originally. And that's where it all kind of started with was, (laughs) was that peach pie. You know, it was really locked in on the peach flavor and terps. And it it's like it didn't matter what you hit that plant to, you were going to have peach phenos in it. You could put 20 20 different mothers, and if you use the peach as a dad or pollen donor, you're going to get peach in every single one of those lines, you know? Well, you took it to the next level, man, and what a story for those who haven't heard, you know, that peach pie mail we called it the dumpster cut. Now, that is a little bit of an exaggeration, you know, the Jordan River spin, like you pulled it out of a dumpster, but yeah, local hash maker. Yeah, the local hash maker had it in the trash bag or whatever, ready to leave, and you were just staring at it, man. It was like, uh, <laughs> it 
It was like uh, Bilbo and the the one ring when he's got it in his hands. You're sitting there. You're like, and why not? And why not take this thing home and pollinate it? Why shouldn't I? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was lucky. You know, he had a, a very large room at the time and was hunting a couple packs of the peach pie from Bloom Seed Co. And uh, I happened to go over there the day he was getting rid of his, you know, going through the uh, the original plants from seeds, the mothers and fathers, and finding the males and tossing all the males. Wow. Um, he had just got them into flower a couple weeks and he had already cloned everybody. So he was tossing the fathers as well as the clones of the ones that ended up being male. You know, I was looking at all of them when I'm standing there and that one out of all of them, I was just like, I, I really want that one. And, uh, I didn't want to take the huge plant home because he lived over an hour away. And at the time, it, I don't think it was legal in Illinois. <laughs> So I was oh, like, hey, right. where's the clones at, you know? Or at least still early. Yeah, or it may have been early. You know, I asked him, I said, do you still have the clones for that one? And he did, but he was just getting ready to throw that tray into the trash. So I took that one, that specific <laughs> one out. And may I, I may have even taken that tray out of the garbage because he may have dumped it in there. I, that's how I remember it. Yeah. That's what we're going to go with. That's an amazing story either way. I mean, it, like, it was, it was trash for sure like he <laughs> you know he grows to make rosin you know hash and stuff so he's not keeping it mail ain't gonna help you yeah totally whether or not it was uh yeah, any dumpster or not was getting in the garbage regardless so wow man yeah that's that is a wild story and you know what it segues nicely into our our next conversation i want to dig into a few specific crosses with you it's what we do on the breeder features you know how it works you took that peach pie mail and you made the first peach pie pollination. And out of that pollination came the peach quake, which like, like I said, man, you should be proud. That thing kind of blew up and still, still is like it, it, it took on a life of its own. A lot of people think it was your first hype strain. You might say like your first one that, that went viral a little bit. But if you remember, we released that pollination to the members first yep. and there was another strain that sold out instantly. Didn't even have time to go hype with everybody else because you had talked about the parents so much. And if you go back and listen to the old episodes, it was the peach pie mail pollen hit to your slurricane that we used to talk about all the time on this show. Is that correct? To make, to make peach typhoon. Yeah. Correct? The typhoon. And out of the peach pie pollination, that was for me the one that I wanted the most. And then would have been the Max Stomper peach pie, which is the peach quake. So yeah, I think since I, you know, me and you talked about it because I was so hyped on the typhoon when it was coming out because I personally wanted to look through those and I did find a really nice keeper in those. And I know a couple of people found really nice plants in the typhoon, but you're right. That one sold out like first day right away, pretty much. So it never really got to see the public. So far, the light of day, yeah. and it was the least amount of seeds, yeah. and it was so good. Oh my god, man! The the typhoon phenos that I was able to try, I don't know where they went though. You lost yours, right? I lost the one that I had access to. Yeah, I lost mine. I'm trying to remember who else. There was a couple people that had really, really good ones. That was so long ago. That was one of the first pollinations. So I I can't keep track of everybody at this point. I want to say J. He may have had one, but I could be wrong. And maybe TK. Yeah, I think you're right. Now, there's a bunch of vaulted packs that just went up on the site. I'm actually looking at it right now. Uh, Typhoon did go up. Peach Typhoon did go up. Instantly sold out again, Rich. Were those the last few packs in existence? Is Peach Typhoon gone? Yeah, I think that was, it was only like two or three packs. Oh my god! I'll gosh. take a look and maybe I can squeeze one out. But other than that, like... <laughs> I kept no the, hold I on to it if you have it for myself for sure. Good, good, know. good, good. Okay, but still, dude, that's uh, whoever got those. Congratulations! The 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 pheno that I got to try, man. And I've said it before, but it's been a while. Gas station fruit pie, artificial gas station fruit pie, and I don't just mean the fruity Love filling. I mean the whole <laughs> the whole thing, dude. It smells like the pastry. It smells like the the mixed berry filling. It smelled like the nitrous oxide that they packed it the in little bit of the, the nitrogen smell. flush yeah <laughs> yeah totally the little artificial chemical wrapper smell it was like dead on gas station fruit pie i was i couldn't stop smoking it if you like sweet weed it was so sweet and delicious i just 
It was one of those ones you couldn't stop going back to it. And it's funny because I didn't really see exactly that from either of the parents. It was just a magical, it was a magical cross that came together to make really crazy phenos. Yeah. So do you remember some of the typhoons that you were able to try? Yeah, I, I do remember the one that I had was actually really gassy. And it was one of the only ones I saw that was like slurricane, funky, Leaning. gassy going on without really any of the peach. But a lot of the ones that I saw were mainly peach. Like, like I said, I'm, it, I don't know if I'm remembering correctly. I want to say JT and, and TK, they both had peachy ones that were beautiful. And if it wasn't them, I apologize. But there was two people around here, around our area, that definitely had two that were like that. And they were stunners. That's right. And then someone in Prohibition land as well on the East Coast, if you remember had a typhoon harvest and it, it took on a life of its own man people were asking for the typhoon it's crazy rich all those years ago man i just wanted to highlight the the typhoon and if you guys ever see that flower if you guys ever see that cut grab it whoever got those packs you really lucked out but l- listen let's talk about one that the listeners can actually enjoy if they go to the website there's a few packs of creature feature yeah. that are up that i see them right now at the time of recording this are still available and this is another one that I wanted to highlight. Can you talk about Creature Feature and what you thought when you were hitting your Ice Cream Wolfman male, such a cool pollination, to the TK Lotto female, Triangle Kush Gelato female? Yeah, man. Uh, the Creature Feature I loved. That one, especially the phenos you grew, you ended up with some really special phenos that really I don't think many other people got to experience or ended up. Don't remind me. Yeah, you had like that Crunch Berry Captain Crunch deal going on that was super fucking pleasurable to smoke on from what I remember. I, I don't mean I don't mean to jump in, but that one I did lose and it smelled like everything, man. It smelled like somebody it smelled like crunch berries throughout the grow. And then at the end it just I I would hand it to people and I would get every response back. Oh, this smells earthy. Oh, this smells sweet. Oh, this smells pissy. Oh, this smells It did musty. have an earthiness to it, kind of musty earthy and, and a little bit a tiny hint of pissy like i said it's on one of the streams it smelled like somebody pissed in my crunch berries dude it's like uh and it was really really complex and really really powerful that was honestly probably a lot of the uh gelato coming out of the tk lotto side you know what i mean Think sure yeah back on it it's just a it was a lot it was a full spectrum flavor and you're right Looking at the people in the Discord who grew this strain, it came out a lot of different ways, right? I don't think it's a very uniform cross compared to the next one we're going to talk about. Yeah, I agree. The the lineage of of the uh, creature feature with the TK Lotto and the Ice Cream Wolf Man, there's a lot going on with both lineages. So you get you get a lot of different stuff. You get those gelato like ones. You know, those cushy triangle cush type ones. You get the headband from the uh, headband organ suckleberry and the ice cream man side. You may even yeah. get like apricot peachy phenos from the ice cream wolf man side as well from the ice cream man from the yes. legend orange apricot that's in that. So you get cross to jet fuel gelato. Yes. Right. You get all sorts of different phenos with the creature feature. It's definitely uh like that, you know, a true F1 so far as, you know, tons of variety goes. I think it's just one of those, again, magical crosses. Like you said, the building blocks that you painted that with are fucking amazing. You've got gelato and deep lineages on both sides, right? I agree. You've got the triangle cush to add the funkiness on one side. You've got the headband to add that, that expression on the other side. Then you've got Oregon's Huckleberry, which is like throwing in, you know, some new flavors and, and new shit into the mix. And you know what's funny? You mentioned the ice cream man. Almost every ice cream wolf man cross I've seen smells like apricots in week four. Yeah, man. That apricot comes out super strong. Holy shit. The grandparent. Cream, yeah. Well, the ice cream man parents. Yeah. When I grew ice cream man, I, I kept a really nice female and a really nice male. And both of them looked extremely similar when they were in flower, except obviously one was a male and one was a female, but they both got this same like deep blood red color. Yes. If you go on why East farm Jeff's page, he actually reposted a picture of the female ice cream man that I had. It's really red. You'll have to scroll back a few years, but you'll see it. It's on there. 
Loving in her eyes actually got one that looks extremely similar and he reposted hers too. It's, it's very red like, but both wow. of those phenos had very apricot orange type turt profiles going on. It's like that stone fruit specifically. And you're right. Ice cream wolf, man, most beautiful strain I've ever grown. The color show is nuts. And I feel that it comes from the purple of the Oregon Huckleberry headband. And then, like you just said, the crimson, those red, like blood red tones come from that ice cream man for sure. Yeah. And uh, compound genetics, right? Shout out to compound genetics. Yeah, they were compound when they made ice, ice cream man. Now it's Chris has his, I think, does compound and Jeff is why he's farms. Oh, there you go. So if you take a look at the creature feature, that's the great grandparents that are still just dominating, right? Because the creature features Very parents. Dominant. Yeah, sure. the creature feature's dad was the ice cream wolf man, whose dad was the ice cream man. So is that grandparent? I guess that's grandparent. Very, very strong. You didn't get to hunt very many creature features. I hunted that one for you, huh? Yeah, you went through uh, quite a few. The one thing I will say is, it's one just the, especially the strain that I was working with, it's one of these ones that's a, a little bit longer of flowering strain. Not crazy, but I would take it to like 10, 10 and a half weeks. Seven, but yeah. dude. You know what Old Bay told me to do that did make it finish way better? This is just my opinion. This is not science fact. <laughs> right. But a lot of people, these weird long flower, super long flowering strains, 16 week growers and stuff, they changed their light schedule to 11 13, 11 on 13 off. I've heard that before. Sometimes for the whole cycle, sometimes at the end. Even according to like super skeptics, like a recent Dr. Coco episode, he said there might be something too it finishing a, a little bit faster. Have you ever toyed with that, changing the light cycle or no? You know, I have definitely, definitely changed. I've definitely done 11, 13, but I've only changed it just to change it and see results. I never really sure had like a strain that I was like, hmm, this one's not finishing right. I should try that schedule to see if it does it. So it's, it's interesting. I should, I should try that because I do run in when I'm pheno hunting, run into plants that just want to continue to flower you know and i know a lot of people run into those because i see posts all the time it's still throwing white pistols and nothing looks like it's done they're just you know continuously flowering it seems like so maybe there is something to it these growers swear by it man and in my limited trials super limited super unscientific trials it seemed to finish it out just right like i was super happy with the results like you said thank you for shouting out my run on the show but I was growing that in Oklahoma and man, that creature feature was just, it was so good. If anyone's listening to this and you have my creature feature, oh shit, will you, will you please give it back? <laughs> Dude, that would be wicked. <laughs> I'll fucking hook you up. We'll trade some cuts because yeah, I would love to get that thing back. But I've been yapping too much, man. Let me finish this off and then we'll move into the next strain, which I know you've seen a lot of examples of. But yeah, the creature feature, there is some available. If you want a strain that's extremely diverse, and its expression, extremely diverse in its flavor, super unique and a color show. Also a monster yielder might flower a little bit longer and you might try a, a longer dark schedule to help it finish, but certainly unique genetics painted amazingly, dude. The selection of lineage is just really, really unique and, and some really, really classic unsung heroes in that lineage. So the creature feature is up there on growcastpodcast.com. Click seeds. And then, of course, members get 20 bucks off per pack, so you might as well jump in membership. Okay, Rich, enough shilling. Let's talk about Tech Truffle. This is another one I feel like popped off, man. Like, Tech Truffle fucking that took one really off. That did, yeah. Oh, my God. Talk to me about Tectonic Truffle, the ones you've seen, what the lineage is, and why you love it. I think that one may have popped off so much because that was, I believe, the first cross I did with Truffle Cake. And at that point, I was really hype on truffle cake. I know you had tried it. I had a lot of people in the circle had tried it. So we were all talking about it, hyping it up. And people grew it, bought it, grew it. And it lives up, you know, to the truffle cake type of frost. You know, it's just completely coated in frost, usually. Uh, very consistent phenos. I mean, you're going to find a keeper or multiple keepers in a pack it seems like it just does really good so that one it did get pretty hyped up because of that i think once especially once people saw how well it was doing you know 
That's a good point. And that peach quake male was what you were working with at the time. Yeah. So you were talking about the truffle cake female, which is like won all the cups, that same famous cut, right? It's won two of our three grow cast cups in the past three years <laughs> from different growers. And dude, I just got to say the peach quake complimented it perfectly. It did. Complimented it perfectly. If there's something, and I love that truffle cake, don't get me wrong, but if there's something missing from that truffle cake, it's the high end, right? There's, there's no upper crust to that. There's no bright, sweet. Dude, the peach quake just added that high note beautifully, in my opinion. That's what I was going to say. If, like, for me, I like the raunchiness of the truffle cake, but that tectonic truffle brought on, it, it let people be able to experience truffle cake that like fruity stuff too, because you could find, it was, I would say, mainly peachy and fruitier type of phenos, but you would still run into the occasional raunchy pheno as well. So it had a little bit of everything for everybody. But it was just, it, it's an all around awesome cross. And even to this day, I still see tons of great examples of people growing out tectonic and sending pictures. I know Spicy Cannivore has one she's been running that's beautiful. Yeah, she keeps running that one, just crushing it in the earth she boxes. Does. That one looks amazing. But to your point, this is an F1 hybrid. Yeah. And while the flavors definitely vary a little bit from here to there, this one's more peachy, this one's more truffly. Mine was like a, like a peach acetone with like a funky underside? I would say most are like that peachy acetone flavor or on the peachier side. So yeah, there is some variance yeah. in flavor, but overall you're going to run into the peachier acetone or just peachier type phenos. And you'll see the occasional raunchy one, but but overall they're pretty much how you described. And in the looks department, they're Uniform. Very similar across the dude, board. Dude, that's like, what I was going to say. Like, this is an F1 hybrid, but my God, you'd think it was a... Oh, dude, if you grew... The way uh, they look? Yeah. They all look the same. A pack of them and put, like, harvested all the females out and put them in a bag, like, people wouldn't think it's different phenos, probably. Like, it's very uniform looking, you know? Totally. And, I mean, in a good way, to be clear. The yeah. nugs are, like, perfectly Beautiful. frosty. You usually get that dark foliage. Like, a lot of them are dark. Yeah, he's a stunner. I think that Steve, the frost farmer who took second place with your tectonic truffle in our that cup, great. Too. He had an extra dark pheno. It was like dark purple, almost bordering on black. And, and you, you would get those sometimes, but basically they all looked the same, dude. Big towering plants that stacked, not lanky, like big spears. You know what I mean? Yes, I was going to say spear-like. And it did great. It, it does great outside. I know people grew it outdoors. I know Sunny Gardens grew some and... Vermont, I think outside, there was quite a few people who had outdoor tectonics that did awesome. Crushed it outdoors. That's another great one outdoors. And and a lot of them finished super fast because the peach quake was a pretty fast finisher and the truffle cake was a really fast yeah. finisher. So you see a lot of what, like eight weeks flat type finishers? Absolutely. Eight weeks, nine weeks at most, you know. That one is, uh, don't sleep on that one. I, I, you deserve the credit. Every single tectonic truffle I've tried has been nuts. And then placing in the cup, in your own cup, uh, in a blind five-judge panel. That's really, really cool, man. Some stunning nails in the tectonics, too, for anybody who cares about that kind of thing. Like, I've seen some amazing nails, huge flowers on them. Oh, good call, man. Big, chunky-ass flowers. So if you're looking for nails, too, you can definitely find some beautiful nails in the tectonics. Growcast membership at growcastpodcast.com. It's a grower's best friend. We work day and night to assist our community of growers because growing should be easy and it should be fun. We're here to help you in your garden. You know, when you go on the internet to get grow advice, you never know what you're getting. Never accept grow advice from somebody who can't explain why the problem that you're having is the problem that you're having. So many people are just lost in the sauce, going online, more CalMag, you know, add some magnesium, add some potassium, add this, add that. No reasoning behind their recommendations. Well, not anymore. You can get real accurate guidance in your grow at growcastpodcast.com slash membership. Plus, comes with all of these amazing benefits from our weekly live stream, Growcast TV, to our AMAs every other Saturday, like the one you're hearing now. We have monthly resources that drop. We have members-only discounts that are going to save you that 15 bucks a month and then some. Like I said, personal access to me and Mary Beth and Wolfman. You get access to the members-only Discord. You get 25% off any classes and in-person meetups. This is the place if you're a grower. Don't miss it. Go to growcastpodcast.com slash membership and sign up right now. 
you will not regret it. We are working every single day to help our growers solving their garden problems, helping uplift them in their grows, and just hanging out, smoking, talking strain reviews. The Growcast community is the most positive community in cannabis. We don't do any of the bull crap. No fighting about topics other than growing all over the server. No attacking each other over grow styles or breeders we choose. We put the plant first, we act positively, and we try to lift each other up as gardeners. That is it. So come and join us. We'll solve all your garden problems. We'll give you a whole host of benefits. It's all at growcastpodcast.com slash membership. Plus, you can help us out on our mission of overgrow as we try to get as many people growing and overgrow this planet. It is our mission, and you can help us as a Growcast member. So check it out. I would love to see you in there. Come and hang out with me in the voice chat. Come and check out all the resources. Use all the member discounts. Check it out for 30 days. You will not regret it. It's growcastpodcast.com slash membership. It'll bring you right there. It's all up on the website, and I cannot wait to see you in our amazing community. Shout out to every single Growcast member. Shout out to Team Growcast. Shout out to the mods, everybody who makes this possible, every one of you listeners. And thank you so much to all the supporting members of Growcast membership. I'll see you guys on the inside. Can't wait to have you. Growcastpodcast.com slash membership. How do you feel looking back on your old work? Like I know when people hand you stuff, you're like super grateful and, and you like to see how it expressed, but like when you see these old crosses, do you do you still have the same affinity for them? Do you feel like uh, this urge to to do something different? Or how do you look back on your old work? I mean, I love all the old work. I think as a breeder, though, um, every new project, you want to be better than the last. Yeah. So at least that's one of my goals is it, it needs to be better than the last or at least as good. So I think that as long as you keep that going, you're always going to look at the stuff before. I don't want to say like in necessarily a bad light, but it's going to be the, the newer stuff is what you're, you're working towards. You know what I mean? You're evolving your own flavors too. And like I said earlier, like I, I really like the gassier, raunchier stuff. So I'm leaning more into that and starting to breed more with stuff like that. So when I pop packs of seeds of it myself. I'm getting more raunchier, gassier phenos instead of more fruitier phenos. So I, I think I'm looking more into the future and the current stuff and more excited just because it's it's new and it's more up my alley, I could say. Yeah, sure. But I still love all the stuff from the past, like the tectonics, the typhoons. I mean, they're they're all fantastic and people give me such awesome samples or examples of what they've grown. I definitely don't have any hate for any of the projects, you know, they all, all have performed really well. So I have no complaints on that end. That's great. That's a great question. But I think you nailed it though. You that constant drive to, to make better, or like you said, at least equally good product, like constantly striving to improve. I think that's where you shine. And also you don't have any preconceived notions. You're not, you're not confined to any ideology, you know? I agree. And I don't know, like I said, as a breeder, I think you should always be striving to do better each time. And not just with evolving and like your pace and stuff like like people evolve as they age too, you know? So everything uh, changes over time, I feel like. Yeah, it's true. It's the laws of the universe, man. But yeah, Tech Truffle is up there. I don't know how many packs we got, Rich. There's not many of those left at all. So yeah, especially at the time this drops, but. I wanted to highlight some that we do have, as well as some that are probably lost to time, like my cut of the creature feature, still some packs up, and then the Typhoon, which is, hold on to those last packs. I'll take that last one, actually. (laughs) The audience is like, no. I mean, if you want it, I definitely can give it to you. I was kind of joking, but also not, so (laughs) we'll talk off air, but uh, let's take just a little bit of a detour before some more breeding talk and talk about your impromptu outdoor concrete sidewalk grow. Talk to me about this plant, man. Yeah. So this is really interesting. So this year, let me go back a little bit. I'll explain how it's set up my area. So my grow in my breeding area is in an outbuilding that is not connected to my house. So I have to walk from that building to get back in my house. Um, In between that walkway, which is about 30 feet, 
this spring I was planting some potted plants and no, they weren't cannabis. They were poppies, some ground cherries, some herbs, basil, shit like that. So I happened to look down next to the poppy pot, the container of poppies, and I see a cannabis plant that had sprouted up and was growing. Like I didn't throw any seeds down. The only thing I can think of is I possibly dropped the seed going from the grow into the house, which is totally possible. You know, I mean, I'm breeding and I'm bringing trays of seeds back and forth. So it's possible that I dropped one, but usually they're in a container and covered. So it definitely has me scratching my head on where this thing came from. But but like I said, it's not implausible that it I could have dropped a seed or it could have fallen out of my pocket. I will say as I'm flowering stuff and they're making seeds before I harvest, like every couple of days towards the end, I'll grab like a handful of seeds out of different buds just to kind of look at them and see the progress of the seeds and check on them. And sometimes I'll put those in my pocket and then finish doing whatever I'm doing in the grow and and walk back in the house. So it's possible I, you know, had a hole in my pocket and the seeds fell out and there is a pair of shorts that has a hole in the pocket. So this is possible as well, not to, you know, dive too deep into it, but this plant sprouted up and it's on my back patio and it came up on the patio. So it came up between the cracks of two of the bricks that form the patio which is like a quarter inch wide maybe it's very thin Uh and at first it got like it was on its first set of true leaves i noticed and it got mauled by something and i thought it was going to die but i just left it and i sent you a picture this morning now it's you know a couple months later the thing's huge it's a, a bush I've tied it down, like every branch down to keep it extremely low to the ground, just to try to keep it like hidden and out of sight. And I think there's like 18 or 22 tops on it now. And it it just looks amazing. I really am shocked at how well this plant is doing, considering it's growing between the cracks on my patio. And I can't really I can't really do anything to it, you know, like I can throw some water on it, but it just kind of spreads across the patio. It doesn't really sink in to the plant that much. Obviously it does, but not a lot. So I'm assuming that the ground underneath the patio, since there's no grass and no plants normally growing on it, that the soil's probably got some nutrients built up in there that haven't been, been used. So maybe that's what's feeding the plant because... All those years of runoff yeah, man, <laughs> from your bottle is, days. <laughs> dude, it, it is just green and lush and beautiful. It's super <laughs> vigorous. And I have done nothing to this plant except tie it down to keep it low. That is it. Like, you know, it doesn't get fed anything. I, I can't put any amendments. <laughs> like, I can't put amendments on it. You know what I mean? It would just be throwing it on the bricks. So no deficiencies. No, I mean, it's amazing how well like i'm shocked i've seen plants grow in cracks before but like usually people just kind of let it do its thing it'll stay small like this thing's huge dude like it's a full-size fucking plant at this point and it's it looks like it's been scrogged out but there's no actual screen you know because every the canopy's all nice and even and tied down every branch it's it looks really cool and since it grew next to the poppy pot all of my poppies are in bloom so if you like take a picture of it there's a giant cannabis plant with a bunch of poppies called going through it so hey it's perfect man. it's no, pretty it's cool two, looking two beautiful plants yeah but i will say this uh as much as you and i love the indoor grow as much as you and i love the end product and your breeding work and all of that man there's nothing like that fucking outdoor vigor and i know you've Dude. done outdoor grows too i don't want to like oh my use an indoor grower. but jesus christ So many problems you cause yourself just by simply bringing it indoors instead of putting it in a natural environment. And sometimes it's like that meme with the buff dog and the sick dog. Sometimes it's like the outdoor plant is like "Mm, cozy concrete. You know what I mean? What is that? It's got to be the microbes carrying all sorts of uh, minerals within their bodies and the rainwater and the sun. And right. I think the sun has a lot to do do with it possibly um just that bigger and in that natural spectrum that i don't think we're ever going to be able to necessarily recreate right in a light bulb or even like led 
And just like a good comparison, since we just had a baby and this is something that they say, like if your baby is comes out like after being born, it's a little bit yellow, has a little bit of jaundice or whatever, the doctor will be like, go outside with the baby for 10 minutes a day in the sun. Yeah. If you give the baby 10 minutes of sunlight a day for a couple of days, it'll get rid of it. It'll bring the belly ribbon down and, and get rid of the jaundice, you know? There's something going on, what is what I'm saying, with that sunlight that I don't think you're ever going to get from an indoor light. And I I am the type of person, I'll say all day, I think indoor flower is always going to be superior. I'm sorry to the people who disagree with that. Like, I'm not trying to argue with anybody. I just think there's something to be said about a controlled environment and just keeping that flower, trying to get it to hit its genetic potential. I guess you could say, but I do love some outdoor and the bigger that you get from those outdoor plants is unmatched, man. Like you just, you know, that the plant being eaten alive by bugs on its very first node, but it still just came back and I didn't spray it with anything or do anything to it. Like if that was indoor, it would have just died. I'm sure, you know, or continued being eaten. Something came along and ate those fuckers that was eating the plant, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Let's say end, end product aside. And, and I know, um, I don't, I don't want this to come off as rude, rise or rich, but I know you're like pretty OCD. So the idea oh, yeah. of like, yeah, like a bug wandering into your outside garden or like uh, a, a, too heavy of a rain. I know these are things that would probably like irk you quite a bit that the controlled environment indoor helps. But let's put end result aside for a second. Do you think outdoor growing is easier overall? That's a really fucking good question. And I, right? I don't. I've always thought about this and like, I've never been able to settle on an answer. And here's why, because I could like right now I have this plant outside I've done nothing with and it's, it's now starting to go into flower. It's doing amazing. You've seen pictures of it. It's green. It's lush. It's doing great and doing what it's supposed to. But then there's been other years where I have a plant outside and it gets devoured and it's just like, you can't do anything to have a decent plant that year. So (sighs) depends on the season is a good answer. Yeah. There's so many factors. Like, I don't think it's necessarily a black and white cut dry answer. You know what I mean? Like I, I think if, if all the, everything's going right, then you can give a bit of a better answer. But I think with outdoor, there's so many things that could happen that could come along and just completely wipe out the garden in a minute, you know, literally like a storm or something. And, 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 Stuff can happen indoor too, don't get me wrong, but it, I just feel like you're going to have a lot more of those factors outdoor. Uh, that's a very similar answer to what I was going to give. Basically, you're saying depends on the season, which is yeah, like a, an much. absolutely great answer. Like a heavy pest Animals, season, you're going to have a lot of trouble. Yeah, this year, there's a lot of bugs, it seems like. Luckily, I, I haven't had that necessarily been my experience with this specific plant, but I will say like my strawberries, my poppies, everything else is getting torn up by bugs. So like and, and earwigs this year specifically are extremely bad, I noticed. And I've seen a couple other people even post about them. Yeah. Flying ants as well. I've seen quite a few of those. Not the termite flying ant kind, but like actual flying ants. So you can tell the difference. It's very easy if you go online and look at, you know, their thorax and wings. It's, it's extremely easy, but I've seen people posting about them too. Just it's a heavy everywhere. insect here. It's, it's a heavy insect here. I feel like it is. And I've heard other people say that. Yeah. That being said, my answer was basically going to be the same, similar, but different, which is depends on where you are. Because what I was going to say is like growing in Molokai is nuts, dude. The, oh, the pest bet. pressure is fucking insane. But then again, it's also once your plant does plug in, like the biology and the sun is unmatched. So there is that. But like to me, growing in the Midwest is easier when in season than growing in Hawaii because there's way less pest pressure. And um, yeah, even though some years it is pretty bad. What was it like on the East coast versus here, you know, Virginia being like a huge agricultural hub for the burgeoning United States where we used to grow like tobacco and stuff like that. Was there a lot of pests out in VA compared to Illinois? There's definitely pests out there. Yes. Worse. When I was on the island in NC, it, I wouldn't say it was worse, but I definitely did see quite a few pests. Mm-hmm. Honestly, thinking thinking about it now, I may have seen like more mites and stuff up here 
And I did do a sure. lot more of my outdoor growing in down on the island in North Carolina versus Virginia. I only did a couple outdoor things in Virginia, technically. And then a lot of it was done in NC on the island, which is, I feel like is just a whole different kind of environment than like the rest of the state because you're on an island in the middle of the ocean. You know what I mean? So you're not going to have necessarily everything that the people on the coast or inland are going to have, but you do have some things also that they don't have. So I definitely saw some, but I, I kind of feel like the Midwest, like there's a lot more pressures out here and maybe I'm wrong, but that's just kind of what I've seen. Like there's a lot of pests, mites, not only that, like, and this is everywhere, even on the East coast, but especially up here, I noticed there's fucking PM everywhere, dude. Like if you, <laughs> if you fucking walk down the street, like look in people's yards and shit, there's fucking PM everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Cause you like see a devouring some poor flower plant in someone's yard. Yeah, man. And, and it's, so it's not just necessarily like pests. It's all, it's a little bit of everything, you know, but I think that's probably everywhere. Yeah, that is true. But I think what your volunteer sidewalk plant showed is that there is some sort of magic outdoors. If you can get through the pests and everything. Agreed. That's my scientific explanation for the difference in vigor, which is magic, probably microbes. (laughs) <laughs> microbial wizardry but yeah man that's a hilarious one we got to get those pictures posted in the discord so people can see this this sidewalk plant dude it is just like the meme we should copy and paste it onto the meme i'm just surprised at how big and, and how well it's doing like i expected it to do decent and get a certain size but now that it's the size it is i'm just kind of blown away and like it was kind of a joke because at first i was just like not even gonna grow it because i didn't know what it was but now that it's so big and it's a confirmed female it's hard to not like i feel obligated to grow it now you know i don't want to get <laughs> rid of it like it's got to see what it is and what it's going to do you know you got to hold on to those genetics what if it's the dumpster cut 2.0 what if it's some sort of crazy unicorn what if it's some crazy unicorn that i don't know man it's it's hard i gotta i gotta let it do its thing at this point i think that you're fucking more you're, <laughs> you're gonna think this is all woo woo bullshit but i think that you're more in tuned with how do I put this kind of the flow of the universe where like you're standing in front of that tray of males and like something's drawing you to this. Right. And and then here you're, if this sidewalk plant turns out to be something special, then you got to just accept it, dude. You have some sort oh, of, yeah, like, absolutely. I agree. I mean, if it's something special, I'll, I'll plant karma. Out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's plant like karma it's or only, something, dude. The only plant that came up. To, so it's a volunteer plant. Like I said, I never planted. I didn't throw any seeds down. It's amazing, you know, that seed had to have fallen out like sometime last year over the winter. So, you know, survived sitting outside and sowed itself basically. And then spring came and it popped and there it was growing in the crack. You should see the stalk on it because the stalk's fatter than the crack now. So like you can see the crack where the plant's coming out of. I've, I've taken pictures of it. I'll take a new one. But like once you get on the top level of the bricks, like the trunk of the plant. So fat, it like looks like fat rolls are falling on top of the bricks, you know? Yeah. I got to see that up close. It's pretty cool. (laughs) Keep us up to date on the sidewalk plant, hit the sidewalk plant to the dumpster cut. And, uh, (laughs) you call it the street Fino, the street Fino. Uh, that's good stuff. The street pollination. Um, speaking of pollination, we need to make sure we have time for current stuff, man. You talk about each uh, pollination being better than the last. I think, I think this next one's going to be hard to top, dude. If you end up using the plant that I think you're going to use, if you end up using the key lime madness that I got to sample to reverse, I, again, I'm not putting any pressure on you. I know you got a plachata that you're super interested in, one of your cookie truffle shuffles, one of your double stuffed Oreos. But dude, that KLM is one of the most special phenos I've ever tried. And is already dominating my 2024 top buds pick. Like it was so good, Rich. Can you talk about the KLM? I feel the same way. It's exactly when I cross, when I made the, those Key Lime Madness seeds, thinking about it like that, the plant that I have now is pretty much what I wanted when I made that cross. Like I've, as a breeder, you don't expect 50-50 to come out like, 
genetic wise. Yeah. That's just it. It doesn't happen. Sometimes on some pinots, yeah, I guess, but like overall, you're not going to see that as the majority. Meaning that the flavors combine fifty fifty to exactly. Make what, so it's like a right. half mom, half dad. Which key lime pie across the GMO is is what the key lime madness is, and that's kind of like what I was thinking when I crossed them. Is I love like a half key lime pie plant and a half GMO plant. And this pheno that I got in this current hunt is very, very limey, but it also has a very garlic funk going on as well. And and it's like a, a turp profile I've personally never seen on cannabis before. I've seen each individual flavor, but I've never seen them combine like they are on a plant before until this key lime madness. It's totally unique and complex and unlike anything I've seen it's nice and frosty it's beautiful you know color wise there's nothing about it that I dislike it flowers in good time and for me like it's up there if if you've heard me talk before on other episodes like truffle cake is one of my favorites that I've found in a long time that truffle cake number two but that key lime madness is right up there with it like it is it's like if you're trapped on an island and you can only bring three strains, like it's in that back, that group. God damn, I agree with that, dude. Yeah, I don't know. Like when you're out of it, you're bummed that you're out of it because it's that good. The effects are like, they're they're just amazing. The effects are amazing. So like when I run out of it, I'm like, fuck, I'm not going to get that same high that I get with the key lime just because it's that good and that different and complex and unique. So I agree. I think it does need to be bread with and more than likely yes that is gonna be the, oh. the next project is, is reversing that pheno to do thumbs because i would like to see that specific pheno do its its thing you know god willing man that key lime is nuts i totally agree the ultimate test because there's so many good strains out there right and even as growers you have all this variety so like which one can you choose which one's the best you end up loving them all the ultimate test is when you run out of one and you're fucking bummed and you go to reach for it again and it's yeah, gone. Or is it the one that's gone first? Like, is it the yes. one that you milk the most, but it's still gone first? That's, those are the best fucking ones, dude. Yeah. It's true. Dude. That's, that is the ultimate test. Lament is really the, the way that you find out which ones <laughs> truly yeah. are the best. This key lime madness is, is just as good as you're saying, man. It's, it's the, it's gotta be one of the best things I've ever smoked coming from you in or out of your garden. And it was your cut. We're actually going to talk about that with this teaser at the end, but just to give a description, when you handed it to me, the outside definitely had that lime coming through. You talk about lime terps on this show, man, you really nailed it with the lime terps on the outside and it's also gassy. And then when you crack into it, you get that lower end funk. I would even say bordering chem, definitely funky, but also like spray paint. I got a little bit of spray paint in oh, there. Yeah. Funk, like, uh, uh, like funky, noxious chem. And also, dude, not just lime, but you've also talked about sours before. Yeah. Oh, the sours in there. It's like sour lime. And I get yes. limes are sour, but like, I don't know. That's just the best way to describe it. Like, it smells a little bit like sour diesel. There's, there's like a sour diesel hint. It's, it's incredible for sure. And it's funny because for this hunt, those are the last key lime madness seeds that I personally had myself. So like if wow. I didn't find anything this hunt, I would have had to get a pack back from somebody. You probably would have just moved on. I, I know. Or you moved probably on or remake it. And I had a, a a handful of these and I only could only get a couple of them to pop. And the two that I ended up with one was female and one was male and the female was that one. So like, it was extremely lucky that I ended up with such a, a God Fino considering like last of the seeds. I don't have anything else to look through so far as those, which is another reason I would love to do a project with it because it is so special. And it's like, that's the, that's the end of it. You know what I mean? Like if I don't do something else with it, unless somebody else does, you know, with their pack F twos it or does whatever with it. You know, I don't have anything 20 years from now I can pull out of my vault and go, oh, I want to grow those again, you know? Man, you outdid yourself with that one. Like I said, I know that's like a lot of pressure. I don't know how you're going to, I don't know how you're going to top this one, man. I'm glad you're doing Fems again. And this is going to be the best one. Reverse to make Fem Pollen and and hit to 
yeah, I think it refers to make foams. It uh, it supplants like truffle cake or this this new plachata that I have, plachata number two, or yes. some of these other extremely frosty and extremely complex special plants. I have a feeling those cross to Keel and I were going to make some pretty fucking wild crosses and. And after seeing the key on this key line madness and like having a profile that, like I said, I've never really seen or experienced before, I could really see using that key lime and hitting it to some other special plants. It also possibly making some profiles that aren't going to be something you're really going to see anywhere else often, you know, like definitely unique, unique profiles. I love that your most recent hunt, this one has come out with so many special plants, man. The Plachata looks amazing. Can't wait to try it. Your CTS, all of these uh, cuts, which uh, we're going to drop this tease right now. These should be available at least to members soon, right? You're going to do a clone drop. Can we talk yeah, about the clone gonna drop? Yeah, I'm going to do a clone drop. I'm going to have some of this specific key lime madness, Fino. You know, I'll release some clones of that. God damn. CTS number two. I kept two cookie truffle shuffles number two i love them both number two i think i like slightly more although number one yields more i just think number two is more up my alley so i'll probably release number two cts cuts i grew a couple double stuff and had some keepers from members uh one of the phenos that i ended up popping from seed ended up being fucking amazing so i kept that one so i'm gonna release that double stuff probably a banana oreo blizzard the plachata probably a couple of the truffle cake number twos and there's there's gonna be a handful of others that i'll i'll release as well for the clone drop am i stoned did you just say double stuff yeah the double stuffed oreos that yeah yeah i'm sorry. sorry the uh the double stuffed or dso the one that i found i'll be releasing cuts of that as well is that the one that smelled like Junior Mints? Yes. Oh, great. Fantastic. Because uh, you're like, it smells sweet. It smells... Th-, and I smelled it. I was like, bro, it, it smells is, like a box of Junior it, Mints. It's, it's incredibly <laughs> complex. So yeah, it was funny when you smelled it. Like you, I mean, obviously you're getting chocolate and mint. And like, I get that. Yes. I totally... like. It's as soon sweet. as you said it, I was like, you're right. It is fucking... There's chocolate. There is... Like, I don't like mint, but I love this double stuff. So the mint's not necessarily, like, strong. It, it's more of, like, the back I end. I like the mint, dude. But it's definitely there. Mm-hmm. There's some saginess. It, the color and colors on it and the frost levels are incredible. And it does throw the fuck down on yield. Like, it throws big-ass buds. So does that Plachata number two. That thing throws some buds as long as my arm, so... I can't wait to try that one. That's one that I haven't got to sample yet. But these are amazing, dude. You outdid yourself on on this run. And so cool of you to make those clones available right away. I think that's neat that people are going to be able to try this Key Lime Madness. And then you're going to make crosses with it. Members are almost certainly going to gobble all of these up, guys. So you want to be in membership. Uh, you'll get a discount anyways. Like your membership fees, you'll save way more just getting in on this clone drop, getting in on any seed drop. Not to mention all the cool shit in there. So jump in membership if you're not already and uh, get ready for this clone wave. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And then grab that KLM and look forward to the KLM pollination. Again, uh, if everything goes according to plan and, and everything pans out the way that we think it will, those those crosses will be dropping shortly after that. Can I make a special request? Let's say in a world where you do get the reversal, everything goes as planned flawlessly. Can you include the LA Kush Farmer John Absolutely. cut that you just got that's one of the best that's one of the best sour weeds I've had combined with your KLM which is the incredible. other best that's sour That's what I mean man I've all had. these really badass keepers uh that I have I think hit with that key lime like mixed with those you just can't can't go wrong with what's probably going to end up happening from those you know I agree man I cannot wait and you'll really see if you push. do get it on the drop fuck. like that yeah absolutely Let's do it, man. And then all the all the regulars as well, like you said. So get in on that, guys. Uh, if we do have any leftover, we'll open it up. But I know the members are going to jump on oh, this yeah. one. So we'll keep you guys up to date as soon as possible. Anything else, man? Anything else in the works? Or are you just uh, plugging along, doing your family stuff, focusing yeah, on I this mean, pollination? I think we covered the clone drop, the, the newest coming project, the Fino hunt. Uh, nothing really new otherwise, just doing the same old stuff, working, doing family stuff. Kids are starting school soon. So, you know, 
getting all that shit ready. And yeah, other than that, nothing really new. I do want to say thank you to all the listeners and members and everybody who supports me and us and Seedco and, and Growcast in general. Like you guys are awesome. Make the show what it is. So I appreciate and love each and every one of you guys. Oh man, I appreciate you. You do such good work for us and we're all very excited, man. Just real quick before we go, and it's okay if uh, the answer is the one that we've revealed already, but of the three strains in the Grand Fino Hunt, R, Z, and O, which one are you most excited about seeing hunted? Dude, that is so top. I know. I didn't even put this on the list of questions. I just sprung this on you. Great (laughs) question. And um, people aren't going to like my answer, man, because like all of them. It's going to be oh, hard. Really? Oh, like, oh, what? It's oh. terrible. Like, I want to, the, the flapjacks, like, I want to see so many of those. And then the other two, like, me and you have yeah, talked about the other two and how we haven't seen many of them. Yeah. Yep. So, it, like, I'm desperately waiting to see those as well. So, like, at the moment, it's really hard for me to say because, like, they all three genuinely equally, like, I am excited to see more of all three of them. I mean, they all may be good for hash. I don't know. But one of them should definitely have some hash, some washers in it, I would think. (laughs) I think so, too. I'm definitely interested to see that one strain, for sure, just to see if if people do find any amazing washers in it. So That is a good point. I'll say Z, dude. I'm excited. (laughs) I'll say Z. That that one's going to be fucking, I don't know. They're They're all all, going to be great, like you said. Good shit, man. I'm really, really excited for that. And hey, let's open up the guessing contest. You can guess which ones are which in the Discord. Let's open that up to everybody, yeah. even those who aren't in the hunt. I think that would be smart, too. So yeah, get in on it, everybody. One more time, thank you to Hygrozyme for sponsoring the Grand Fino Hunt. It's amazing, and this is really what we're trying to do, guys. And it's one of the most fun ways that we can get people involved. You know, make growing fun and easy. That's really our goal over here, so... Come check us out. We'd love to have you. One more time, thank you to Hygrozyme. Thank you, Rizo Rich. Thank you to all the Fino Hunters. Thank you to all you listeners. Stay tuned. Uh, growcastpodcast.com is where you can find Rizo Rich's genetics. At Rizo underscore Rich ICC is the only real Rizo Rich account on Instagram. But get at him in the Discord. He's a busy guy, and uh, we definitely prioritize the amazing members. So if you need anything, come and holler at us. DM me. I'll give you 30 days free even. Come and hang out. We'd love to have you. And that's all. One more time. Thank you, Rich. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, dude. I appreciate you and everybody else. Like I said, I hope everybody uh, has a a damn good day when they hear this. Uh, I love it, man. Love it. Thank you so much, listeners. I appreciate you tuning in. More Growcast on the way. Switch into a video format full time soon. Some fun stuff. Don't touch that dial. I appreciate you. Love you, members. Love you, listeners. Take care out there. We'll see you soon. This is Riser Rich and Jordan River signing off, saying to you, be safe and grow smarter. Later on. That's our show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to Riser Rich. And thank you, dear listener. I appreciate each and every one of you. Make sure to go to growcastpodcast.com. There you'll find seeds, discounts, and the membership, of course. Jump into membership. We would love to have you. Before we wrap it up, quick shout out to Rooted Leaf Nutrients. Rootedleaf.com code GROWCAST for 20% off the best nutrients you can find. Get that explosive growth. No need to pH. Works in any system. I love this stuff. Rootedleaf.com. If you're not completely satisfied with your nutrient regimen, go and give it a try. Grab their starter kit and use code GROWCAST for 20% off. Tell them that I sent you. You'll get that 20% discount. It helps us out and you will never go back. Rooted Leaf. I love it. You'll love it. Go and check it out. Rootedleaf.com code GROWCAST. Thank you to Rooted Leaf. And thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you. Like I said, I'm headed back from the islands. I am finishing out the set to work on Growcast TV season six for the members. That's dropping. And then soon we'll get the video rolling on the main podcast. So don't touch that dial. I appreciate you all. Take care out there, everybody. Stay safe. Bye-bye. People aren't going to like my answer, man, because like all of them.